teaching coming from uh, Padma Sambhava, mm. and he gave that teaching to one of his uh, female disciple, Mon Mo Tashi Chinden. You know, she's from Bhutan, and uh, she was a young girl, and then she studied with Kandro Yeshe Tojel, and then when he, she met to Padma Sambhava, <coughs> she asked Padma Sambhava to give. Uh, the final teachings, and then Brahma Sambhava said the truth, the, 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 the reality, the truth, the only truth is about our mind, right? And so if we think about our self, you know, there's a, the self, we think it's our name, that we think it's our body, we think it's our emotions, you know, we have many ideas to, <clears throat> about our self, and, uh, and this teaching says the self, self, uh, at end, the self is about our mind, and then what is the nature of the mind? That's the transcendental, you know, from the birth and the death. Yeah, actually, it's a very, very nice teaching. You should listen that many times. I think it takes about five, six minutes. If you listen every day, you only need to meditate five, six minutes per day. You can listen anywhere. I think it will really, really help you to to clean your mind and to process all your emotions, okay? So, yeah, I can give you that uh, audio, you can download it and listen that every day. <clears throat> okay, I think, yeah, that part is very important, about mind. And so today uh, it's about uh, Yuto Nitti's empowerment, empowerment, uh, Yuto empowerment and uh, long life empowerment. And so, um, the, this empowerment in Tibetan is called the Wang, you know Wang. Wang is like, a, Wang Cha is like a power. And um, <clears throat> I think the translation in English, this empowerment is really, really nice, you know, very good uh, uh, translation. And um, so I try my best to empower you now. But then the most important is you must empower yourself every day. You have to empower yourself before you go to sleep. You have to empower yourself while you are sleeping, when you are dreaming. Okay, you have to empower your dream. And you have to empower yourself when you wake up. You have to empower your day, you have to empower your night. You have to empower every moment of your life. Right? I think that's very, very important, you know. So then when we talk about empowerment, and we always have a choice, right? It's like uh, happiness and unhappiness. So you, you choose, you empower your unhappiness or you choose your happiness. But normally we always, you know, kind of uh, automatically we empower our unhappiness or sadness, right? So we are empowering. We don't want to empower, but we empower automatically. That's why sadness has a power. And that's why unhappiness has a strength, you know. That's why depression, stress, they become so powerful. So he, who, who give all those power to them, these bad emotions, anger, stress, you know, all this, and we empower them. Do you understand? So somehow we are doing the wrong empowerment. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, you know, like a lack of self-confidence, that's an empowerment too, you know. Instead of believing and trusting in ourselves, so we empower the, what do you say, distrust in ourselves. Do you understand? So it's, it's, I think it's a very important word. I like this English translation. <clears throat> and Tibetan is called Wang Kurwa, means giving you the power, you know. Wang Kurwa means giving you the power. And um, of course, empowerment, it's like a, empowerment, it is a, how do you say, it's a guided meditation, but for you it's very important to know that uh, meaning, you know, to know that meaning. And uh, especially in the first empowerment is about five chakras, and uh, five chakras uh, are the locations of five, our inner poisons. And those five inner poisons, they are like five different types of uh, darkness, you know, dark spots. And then it's up to us, we see it as a darkness or as a light, right? So when we see darkness in our head chakra, 
then we are controlled by ignorance, or we are controlled by confusion and stupidity. Do you understand? So the darkness of this uh, ignorance or the, the stupidity is in our head chakra. Right? Like Buddha said, uh, one of Buddha's teaching, he said that the darkest night in our life, the darkest night is the ignorance. So actually that darkest, darkest night is in our head, you know, every day and every night. That's why we are kind of confused and we get lost and, you know, we don't find the, our inner light and the, our inner true path, okay? And then, as I said, we are kind of, uh, how do you say, in a stupid way empowering that uh, ignorance constantly, right? We give the power for our ignorance. We give the power for our stupidity. And we feed, you know, we are feeding all these things, right? The same way the uh, Sura Chakra is connected with uh, desire or attachment, right? You know, we have the, how do you say, we have uh, endless desire and we have endless uh, uh, attachment, right? As Buddha said, the more hope we have, that also brings more fear. So at the end, we are like trapped between hope and fear, right? That's called the bipolar. Yeah. Right? Up and down and up and down and up and down. We have hope and hope and hope. Because of hope, we get scared. We have fear, right? Like we, you know, we, we wish we hope for a good health. That's why we are scared of getting sick, right? We hope and we wish for the use and for, uh, how do you say, use energy, to become, to become young, and then we get scared of aging and becoming ugly and this and that, right? So it's very interesting, this coexistence between wish and hope. You know, Tibetan is called Re Tok. Re is hope and wish. Tok, tokpa means like a fear or the doubt, <clears throat> right? So we always try to eliminate the fear and the doubt, and then we want to keep the the hope and the desire. So it doesn't work, right? So somehow this <clears throat> attachment and desire is in our sore chakra. And again, it's, it's manifesting as like a dark spot, you know? So during the empowerment, we have to transform it or we, we uh, have to see the true nature of the, the true nature of this, uh, how do you say? True nature of that, uh, true nature of the desire, the attachment. You understand? The true nature means what is the, the, the reality of the desire, the attachment? What is the reality of the ignorance, right? And then this uh, <clears throat> chakra, the heart chakra, this is the anger. Anger is located in uh, our heart chakra. <clears throat> okay, again the anger it's a kind of like a, a stress, you know, it's a very, very powerful energy. It, is a, it can be a very, very destructive emotion, right? Anger. Like one great uh, uh, master, Shantideva, said, uh, <clears throat> you know, you do good things and practicing and meditating and many uh, virtue things. He, he said, even you do whole life and one strong anger can burn everything. <laughs> One strong anger can destroy everything. And uh, so that's why our, you know, the problem with anger is, you know, we're all humans and we have this uh, nature or the feeling of anger. But when anger is too strong and we lose the control. So once we lose the control, it's be really becoming like a poison. We poison ourselves or we poison others, right? So that anger make ourselves unhappy or we make others unhappy. <clears throat> and that's called the poison, harming, right? Harming. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So therefore, the, the third empowerment is the heart chakra. And third, uh, the heart chakra means empowering. Our heart chakra means transforming the anger, the hatred. We have to transform that, right? If we don't transform that, that's kind of like a dark energy. It's a dark force. And then, uh, how do you say, it can be very destructive, right? And then we have the navel chakra, and navel chakra is uh, connected to the, um, uh, the pride. Pride. 
Uh -huh. The pride. Okay. It, it, it's a, it's a, something interesting, you know. It, it's good that we have pride in our life. I think uh, when, you're, when you don't have enough pride, then that's a problem too, right? Then, like low self, low self esteem, you don't believe in yourself, you know. You're always shy and you can't do, you can't talk, and you can't express these things. But the problem is, we are lack of this uh, divine pride, the pride for good things, okay? And then we have another kind of stupid pride, <laughs> right? It's a destructive pride, and this pride controls us and to doing wrong things, to making wrong decisions. You understand? You know, sometimes we are just simply believing on stupid ideas, right? We have a stupid idea, even people are telling you it's stupid, but you don't want to listen because you have this uh, special stupid pride. <laughs> it's really like that, you know. So that's why I think that all these emotions, we can always divide, you know, the good part and bad part. And I think especially this uh, pride part, pride or we can also say ego. Actually, ego is a very interesting word, right? Ego, it's a, a Greek word. You know, the Greek word ego and English I is exactly the same, right? Ego and I is exactly the same. And that's why the teaching, um, what we have heard earlier, that's teaching about I. And that's a teaching about ego. I think we really have to work on ego. If you listen many uh, spiritual teachings, you know, some teachings, they really, how do you say? The teachings are very hard and very harsh, very strong. They try to destroy our ego. But we should not destroy our positive ego. We need that positive ego. If we don't have that divine or positive ego, we cannot come over from this stupid ego. Do you understand? So that's why, in any case, the pride also can be very destructive. It can destroy ourselves. It can, you know, make ourselves uh, stupid and unhappy, and we can destroy others too with our stupid uh, pride. Do you understand? So that's the fourth empowerment, and then the last one, the fifth one, is the jealousy. Jealousy. Who suffers from jealousy? You, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> of, great, of great teachers like you, yes. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Do you choose a guru or smoke? <laughs> ah, I know your answer. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's what that's that's all about empowerment. Okay. Or we empower the poison, or we empower the medicine. Do you understand? Which one do you want? Which one do you want to choose? You want to choose the medicine or the poison? Or you want to choose the happiness, or you want to choose the, uh, the pain or suffering. Do you understand? So it's, it's a very simple question. Of course, we want happiness. We want to be happy, be healthy. But, but meanwhile, we destroy our happiness and we destroy our health. Right? That's called actually stupidity. And sometimes we don't know, that case is called ignorance, and sometimes we know it's harmful, but we still do it. That's called stupidity, right? That's the, the, that's the difference between ignorance and stupidity. But for me, it's, it seems it's the same, yeah. <clears throat> okay? And so that's all called the empowerment. And you really think about your own mind, you really think about your own emotions, and you have to know yourself, you know. Do you understand? Actually, the Tibetan word of meditation. Meditation is called the gong. The meaning of this gong is, uh, is the process of knowing ourself and, and to getting used about ourself. Do you understand? How much do you know about yourself? Do you know yourself? Do you know yourself? How much? 10%? <laughs> Uh, it's a very simple question. How much do we know about our body, right? Sometimes people say, oh, you are so beautiful, but you always find yourself so ugly. So who is right? <laughs> do you understand? Who is knowing yourself better? So it, I think it's a very simple question, but it's a very important question. How much do we know about ourselves physically? 
how much we know about ourselves uh, energetically. And then the last question is how much we know about ourselves mentally, you know, right? About our mind. So that's the famous question. That's the famous question. But when we are happy, you know, some moment we feel happy, we think we are, you know, I'm a happy person. But then the other moment, unhappy and sad, and we think, oh, you know, I'm a sad man, I'm a very unhappy person, this and that, right? But what is the reality? In reality, I'm an I'm a unhappy person or a happy person. Do you understand? I don't know. Maybe I'm bipolar. <laughs> happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy, right? Oh, now I'm happy. Oh, no, now I'm unhappy. Oh, up and down, up and down. Okay? Actually, who is not bipolar here? <laughs> Anyone is free from bipolar? Maybe Nena? <laughs> no place. <laughs> no, <laughs> no comment, okay. <laughs> okay. So that's why I think uh, we need to know ourselves, number one. And number two is I think for us it's very important that we have a choice. Do you understand? We don't need to believe in God and God's punishment. And also we should not get lost with the idea of karma. Oh, this is my karma, I'm suffering. Oh, this is my karma, I'm unhappy. Oh, this is my karma, I'm depressed. <laughs> okay? We should not blame to karma. We should not blame to karma like a god, you know? Do you understand? Sometimes for me it's the very similar in the <coughs> Buddhist and the Hinduist people, they are talking about karma and blame to karma. They say, oh, this is karma, karma, karma. It's very similar. People are saying, oh, God, God wants this way. God wants me sick and God wants me happy and this and that, right? But according to Vajrayana says, <clears throat> even there is a God, we can control the God. Right? Even there is a karma, we can control the karma. It's, it's really at the end, it's our own choice. If it's our own choice, then we have to do the empowerment. We have to empower, we have to empower the light. We have to empower the happiness. We have to empower the good force, <clears throat> right? We have to empower our freedom. If we don't empower, we don't get it, okay? Is that simple? <laughs> That's why Vajrayana, Tibetan Buddhism says, everything starts with empowerment, right? Everything starts with empowerment. And that's why you have to know the meaning of empowerment once you know it, and that's, that's your meditation too. That's your meditation too. But you choose between happiness and unhappiness. If you are able to choose happiness, and you empower it, give force on it, and you are happy, it means your meditation. You are doing a good meditation, and your meditation is working. Yes? You said that hope and fear were intrinsically yes, yes, yeah. linked. So. Are, are you saying that to eradicate fear, we should not bother ourselves with hope? No, no, no. Uh, I didn't get you, sorry. So, if hope and fear are the two yes, yes, faces yeah. of the same coin, mm -hmm. in order not to have fear, should we stop hoping for things? Uh, yeah, less hoping. With expectation works better. Uh, yeah, but sometimes our problem is not the problem is the hope. Sometimes we over hope, <laughs> right? Like uh, our hope is maybe like the perfectionism. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You see, like of course today in our society everyone wants to get this perfectionism, but so many people are stressed and depressed because of this. Do you understand? The instead, you know, they are dreaming something perfect, perfectionism. And that brings, like, that gives a perfect stress. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, for example, when I go to some special countries, like in Switzerland or Germany, you know, Swiss people, they have the idea of this perfectionism, right? And they are kind of, some of them, they are very good also perfectly how they repress and suppress their emotions and feelings, right? But at the end, you ask them, are they happy? Of course they are not. You understand? Yeah. So that's why, uh, yeah, 
uh, it is not when you just stop hoping everything. You can have a hope, but not this extreme hope and too much expectation. Do you understand? Thank yeah, you. it's like a, you are, let's say your love story. I hope you have a love story. If you have too much expectation, if things things doesn't go according to your expectation, and then hurts more, right? So you just go with how do you say the flow without much expectation. Even something go wrong, it's okay. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> so you're not too high. Even you fall, you don't fall so deep. <laughs> okay, so that's about empowerment. And uh, you know, normally all the empowerment comes in a ritual form. You know, it's a ritual. Actually, empowerment is a guided meditation. It's very important to know that, okay? A guided meditation. And during the empowerment, you understand what empowerment is, and maybe the best case also, uh, hopefully you will have some experiences. What you know, you understand what empowerment means, and you experience it, and then that's it. From tomorrow, you have to empower yourself. My work is finished. Okay, and that is actually one of the best meditation. When you are able to empower yourself, you know that's why I'm saying. Before you go to sleep, you empower yourself. Tell yourself, don't think too much, don't worry too much, just go to sleep. Empower yourself, and then your mind listens to you. You just fall asleep. Do you understand? You are having a bad dream, you empower yourself in the dream, and then it's like, you know, nothing is controlling you in your dream. You can control everything in your dream. Do you understand? No one animal is chasing you in your dream. If you want, you can chase everyone in your dream. It's your dream, you're afraid to do anything, right? And again, if you don't empower yourself, when you don't believe in yourself, you can't do that. Right? This is the one of the main point of dream yoga, you know, main point of dream yoga. And dream yoga is telling us, it's a dream, it's a choice, you know, also it's our own choice. You can do whatever you want in the dream if you empower yourself and if you believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, you know, what, what we do in the dream, we always become the victims. Do you understand? Somebody is chasing after us. And somebody wants something from us. Somebody is torturing us. Do you understand? It's very funny, you know, dream, it's, it's created by ourselves, but we are the victims. Why? Because we are stupid. <laughs> right? <clears throat> so that's why dream yoga is so true. Dream yoga says it's your choice, it's your dream, and uh, you know, you're free, whatever you want to do. Do you understand? So sleep is our choice, dream is our choice, and waking up is our choice too. And happy, unhappy, you know, feeling good or feeling bad, and good mood, bad mood, everything is our choice. Of course, it's our life is completely, how do you say, interconnected, you know, with our friends, with our work, and families, and society, politics, whatever. We are completely connected with everything, but at end, at end, it's at end, it's our mood, and our feeling, and our happiness is just in our hand. Okay? I said there is a very famous Tibetan book. Uh, it's called uh, Liberation is in Your Palm. There's a very famous Buddhist book. But I suggest you don't read that book. <laughs> <laughs> don't read. You don't, I, I'm sure you don't have time to read that book. It's a very complicated book. <laughs> but I like the title. Okay? Don't read that book, but you just need to. You, you only need to know that uh, the title, it's a very good title. The liberation is in your palm, and freedom is in our hand, and happiness is in our hand. Okay? <clears throat> All right, and I think especially in our society, in our society, in our time, we really need to understand this, uh, how do you say, about empowerment. Do you understand? You know, like, if you go to meditation, Shamatha, Vipassana, you know, come, come abiding mind or insight meditation. But normally you always, enter, you know, you are introduced the meditation. Okay, how to sit, how to breathe, 
and how to do this, and you know, don't think anything, this and that. It's a good meditation. But Vajrayana says, before you do these things, you have to empower yourself. You, you make the decision that you can do it, you can make it. You know, decision is your decision, it's not your guru's decision. Uh, or it's not the, the, the method or the, not the technique. Do you understand? So it's like a self-trust, self-trust. We have to make sure that we believe in ourselves, and that's why we believe in what we are doing. That's called Vajrayana. <laughs> that's called Vajrayana. Vajrayana means indestructible, indestructible path. Do you understand? So in Vajrayana, we have to believe in our Vajra body. Our human body is a perfect body. Chingang. You know that yeah? in Chinese, Vajra, Chingang. Our body is a Vajra body and indestructible body. Our energy is a Vajra energy, it's indestructible. And our mind is Vajra mind. You know, the, the, in the teaching says the self, self of selflessness. <laughs> okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, that's why, yeah, member chepa wang. Member chepa wang in Tibetan means once you receive the empowerment and that, uh, how do you say, that makes uh, member chepa means ripening, right? Min mm -hmm. wang. Yes, right. <clears throat> ripening. Do you understand? So you should imagine like you are a fruit, you are a fruit. Before you receive empowerment, you are a, I'm sorry to say that, but you are, the good news is you are a fruit. The bad news is unripened. <laughs> but the, the empowerment process is a ripening fruit. Do you understand? If you feel you are a man after empowerment, you really know you are a man. Do you understand? You are ripened with the knowledge, with the experience, and with your own trust. Okay? That's why Minche <laughs> you want. So it's a, a ripening process. Ripening, you say? How do you say it in English? Ripening. Ripening, ripening process. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do you understand? With the energy and with knowledge and with the understanding. Minche <laughs> you once you are ripen and then you see things by yourself, do you understand? Like then you are a complete fruit, do you understand? Mm -hmm. You are ripened, uh, I don't know, watermelon or uh, apple <laughs> or mango, <laughs> right? You are ripened, it means your life is in your hand, okay? Then you do meditation, you do yoga, whatever, it's everything is in your own hand, your own hand, okay? All right, so that's about uh, empowerment. Do you have any questions about, uh, then especially also about long life. You know, we have the long life empowerment. And this long life empowerment also says that really the key point, the key point of longevity, okay? Good health and longevity is self-trust, okay? We have to empower ourselves. It's very interesting, you know, like, uh, uh, Recently, I met one German doctor. He's an expert of the uh, psychosomatic disease. You know, before I know, I, I know the psychosomatic disease, but I didn't realize that there are some hospitals that are specialized in psychosomatic disease. In Germany, there are few hospitals like that, you know. And they know that there are so many our diseases are psychosomatic diseases. But if you tell patient, it's just your mind, you know, psychosomatic, it doesn't work. So they have to do different things, you know, to really doing many different things to, to reverse, right? Psychosomatic disease, psycho is the mind, soma is body, somehow our mind is attacking our body. <laughs> it's a, a, another kind of stupid thing, right? <laughs> Instead of mind loving to the body, and mind is hating to the body and create a fear, tension, and then creating disease. And this doctor said more than 60% of sickness in general in our time is psychosomatic disease, okay? Psychosomatic disease, right? Normally we get scared of this uh, autoimmune disease, you know? Autoimmune disease, there is no cure. But many cases, it seems also psychosomatic disease, there is no cure until we understand something, until we see the truth. 
until we really believe, trust in ourselves, then we relax. We say, okay, you know, I was stupid. I was stupid. Until now, I was so stupid, and I believed that, you know, wrong belief, wrong view. Okay? That's why the famous, uh, how do you say, Jetsunkaba, you know, that's the professor's specialty, Jetsunkaba, the smartest Tibetan, uh, Tibetan lama, Tibetan philosopher, okay, Tibetan scholar, was called the Jetsunkaba. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud of him. So I was born also somewhere close to where he was born, <laughs> <laughs> same hometown. He's very, very smart, Jetsunkaba. Do you understand? He always pointing, he said, it's important to have the right view. Do you understand? Right view. About, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, everything in our life. Religious views, philosophy views, theories, and studies, and educations. Do you understand? And we all have brainwash, right? We're all being brainwashed. You know, I had a Chinese communist brainwash. How about you? Is it the same? <laughs> But. Not really. No, you have American brainwash. <laughs> so you have more American brainwash. I have Chinese brainwash. Uh, and what do you have? American brainwash. <laughs> American brainwash. You see, it, it's really interesting. We are all like being brainwashed, and we we don't have our own clear view about the reality, about our life, and about seeing things. This, you know, we are all like, oh, you know, somebody said this. Or, you know, the, our education system is like this, or this and that. We are always just, uh, how do you say, blindly running after other views, right? That's why Je Tsongkhapa said, Yang Tape Tawa. How do you translate Yang Tape Tawa? Realistic. Realist, view. Realistic view, the true view. Okay? And that what is the true view is we need to have the true view about ourselves. Right? Once we understand, once we see ourselves very clearly, or once we understand ourselves very clearly, so easy to understand others. Do you understand? But we try to understand others so, you know, and we try so hard, and we never try to understand ourselves. We never get it. Do you understand? I try to understand him, I don't get him, and then I try to understand her as, okay, another one. It never works. Do you understand? So what, if I really truly understand myself with the correct view, it not I'm just brainwashed by this and that one, through experience and understanding with analytic meditation and so on, and then for me it's so easy to understand others. Do you understand? So the correct view is the pure view, especially about ourselves. And that's why in the Vajrayana always says the uh, pure vision. Okay, Vajrayana is uh, one of the key points. The philosophy is pure vision. Pure vision means it's similar like in the, what do you say, positive thinking. It's similar, to, uh, it's something much more than that but positive thinking, positive thinking about ourself, positive thinking about our health, and positive thinking about our longevity. Do you understand? And also believe and trust. You know, I believe that I can live until 100 years. Do you understand? No doubt. If there's a doubt, it's attention. That's the problem. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> So that's why, yeah, the long life empowerment, I really like here with this uh, Yuta tradition. It's really, uh, I, I often compare this to, you know, in the Western concept, we, we have this idea very clearly, psychosomatic disease, okay? So the, the German doctors, they are so precise, they are studying and learning and treating patients with psychosomatic disease. They are very good about this, right? And so what Tibetans are talking, and especially in Vajrayana, what we are talking is psychosomatic healing. It's not psychosomatic disease. You understand? We are not focusing on the disease. We are focusing on the healing. If mind can create sickness, why mind cannot cure? Do you understand? If mind can attack our body, 
why mind cannot nourish our body? It's the same question, do you understand? Why we can go right way and why we cannot go left way? Do you understand? So it, it's always the same question, but so, sometimes we are like single-minded, you know, one way. Psychosomatic disease, okay, everything is disease, disease, psychosomatic disease, disease. What's the solution? I don't know. <laughs> you know, sometimes we focus too much, analyzing too much. Okay, psychosomatic disease, psychosomatic. What's the solution? There's no solution. Giving some pills and tablets that make your muscles relax for a few hours. And then, because you, they, they don't touch, they don't talk about the mind, the origin and the root cause of all problems, right? The pills and pills and pills and pills and pills, again and again and again. Do you understand? So that's why this long life empowerment, it's a very powerful psychosomatic, how do you call it, healing process. Okay? I think that, that that's really, really true. That's why our health, our longevity, also it's our decision. But whatever decision we make, we have to believe in it, okay? We have to believe in our view, we have to believe in our dream, we have to believe in our view. Do you understand? <clears throat> okay, so that's about, uh, yeah, general, we have two empowerments. Uh, first is uh, Yuto empowerment, and first empowerment is uh, uh, transforming five inner poisons into five Wisdoms, exactly. That's the general empowerment. And then the second part is empowerment of the, what do you say? Uh, yeah, long life empowerment. Okay? So also it's interesting, you know, there's one empowerment, it says the long life empowerment of the uh, armors, you know, the shield, like armors, protections, right? And that's something similar like our immune system. Our body has an immune system. And this immune system tried to keep us, you know, healthy, right? It's protecting us. Our immune system is protecting us. And then an empowerment says, you have to believe in your protection, right? And again, it, it, it's a very interesting thing, because if we believe in our immune system, and our immune system is working better, right? If you don't believe in the immune system, Immune system is working hard, but it's weaker. It's because it's it's lack of energy. It's not empowered. Do you understand? Empowering is like like the giving the energy, like uh, how do you call it? the uh, the fuel for the car? You know, you have to give it right, like nourishing, giving the strength and the power, and then it works better. Do you understand? So it's called empowerment of shield. You know the shield when you go for a war. <laughs> Actually, you know, we, our body, physically, we are in constant war, right? There are so many microorganisms, they are attacking us. You know, in our body, we have so many, you know, bacteria, this and that. We are full of bacteria, and they are constantly attacking. Our immune system is like constantly, you know, fighting them back and this and that, right? And so, and in, the long life empowerment says to put this, uh, Vajrayana shield, or the armor, armor, you know, hold the shield and put the armor on. So what is that? You can do mantras, you can do meditation, but also it's this our self-trust. <coughs> self-trust and self-empowerment. All right? Good? So any questions about empowerment? This is just a short introduction, and uh, later, yeah, we will go in the ritual. The really, the, you know, empowerment, it's a really amazing guided meditation. It really helps you to understand about your nature, and it really help you to, uh, to help you to believe your, your own power, your own strength, your own energy. Do you understand? You know, normally, also if you, uh, how do you say, think of Vajrayana, we have this like Guru Yoga, it seems like you are depending on guru, you know, you need to take energy from your guru, you need to receive blessing from guru, 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 and this and that. But in empowerment, at the end it says, you are, the best your guru is called your inner guru, that's your own nature, yourself. There is no one better guru than yourself. Do you understand? 
Self is the best guru, right? Your life is your best guru. And that's why you have to trust in your guru. And your guru is always with you. Your inner strength, your inner power, your inner light. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do you understand? And you know, we we always believing in the mantras and yogas and this. We believe so many things externally. And we want so many things externally. But Vajrayana says, everything is already perfect there internally. We only need to see it and we need to experience it, right? You see, you experience, you understand, then you get it. That's it. That's why we call it the, the, the second stage of Vajrayana practice is called the Dzogran. means the completion stage, completion stage. And actually everything is perfectly completed within ourselves. Nothing is missing in this amazing, wonderful, beautiful human body. Do you understand? Whatever you desire, the happiness, the paradise, you know, the, the bliss, whatever you desire, everything is already there in our mind. Do you understand? Why we need, why, why we need to, how do you say, take like uh, drugs? Do you understand? Even, even the Vajrayana is saying, if you want to see the lights, if you want to experience the lights, the lights are already within our body. So we don't need to take magic mushrooms. <laughs> you understand? So for example, this tanka, that's the vision. This, the, these two tankas, the circles, that's the one vision. This is another vision, right? We, we can say, oh, this is a beautiful art. That's so beautiful, so amazing. Vajrayana says all these visions, the colors, the forms, everything is within ourselves. It's not with, you know, inside of me, only me, because I'm a Tibetan. With everyone, with all humans. That's our nature. That's our real nature, our true nature. Do you understand? If you take magic mushroom, you see only a very small part of that. <laughs> Do you understand? Some people, they take drugs and they feel very high and bliss and blah, 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 these drug experiences, right? And drug experiences is something very short, and short and stupid. <laughs> because once your experience is finished, then you feel down and you feel weak and vomiting, headache and all these things. Oh Do you understand? You meditate and you see yourself, be yourself, go inside inner dimension. Everything is perfectly there. Okay? All experiences, what you need to experience, it's everything's there. You know, you only need to see it correctly way, take the right path and experience it. Do you understand? <clears throat> so that's, that's called the Vajrayana and the, the, the empowerment also it's called like opening the door. Okay, opening the door, door of ourself. So once the door is opened and then you start your journey. But this is not an external journey, this is an inner journey. All right, that's very, very important. Inner journey, <clears throat> inner journey with our inner, inner body, inner chakra, you know, the inner world. Okay, good. And then, as I said, the problem with our, you know, traditional empowerment is there are so many rituals. It goes with prayers, mantras, and uh, <clears throat> and then the, you know, the instruments and so on. So many people they just get lost in the ritual, you know. And then they think, oh, empowerment is like, you know, mantras is a kind of blessing. Oh, I received a blessing. Long life empowerment, blessing, this and that, you know. That maybe can last one day, two days, three days, and then it's gone. <laughs> blessing. Blessing, like, you know, you, you get something in your skin, like a massage. You get oil, you know, you get an oil massage. Once you showered it, and then all is gone. It's not like that. It's really something inside, you understand and you experience and you keep that whole your life. That's called the empowerment. Do you understand? <clears throat> and sometimes the empowerments are very, very long empowerments. Because it's, you know, the text is so long, so many chantings and this and that, and maybe the masters, they don't have time to explain to you or to guiding. And then, of course, you know, we simply get lost it. But I think it's important to, to remember 
They're really like the key points or the essential points. Okay? Good? Any questions about environment? You can ask me some questions. And later you should arrange your mouse and then we start environment. And uh, yeah, we make a short break, then we do the ritual part or the guided part. I'll guide you later. Yes? How many different types of empowerments? How many different types of empowerments are there? there's, so there's an empowerment for longevity. What are some of the other empowerments, the major so ones? So normally, okay, that's a very good question. Normally there's an empowerment, is called the root empowerment, okay? This root empowerment, we have only four. Four root empowerments. Transforming the ignorance, that's number one. It's called the vase empowerment. Transforming our uh, attachment and desire, that's called the secret empowerment. And then transforming our anger, and that's called the uh, wisdom empowerment. <clears throat> and then transforming the all five poisons together. And that's called the empowerment of word. Uh -huh. Word empowerment, you know word. And word empowerment, why it's called word empowerment? Saying some words, try to show the, the reality which is beyond of expression. You know, beyond of words. Right? So that's why empowerment itself, there are only four empowerments. But isn't there a medicine Buddha empowerment? Yeah, yeah. Then this, uh, there are other like small branches. But if you talk the root empowerment, there are only four. Okay? And also the big empowerment, like Kala Chakra empowerment. And then there's uh, 11 uh, preparation empowerment, you know. So there are some em empowerments are extended. There are different uh, rituals and different steps and so on. This is like more, how do you say, elaborated empowerment. But if you want to know the Vajrayana empowerment, real empowerment, the Anuttara Yoga Dantara, there are only four empowerments. Okay? Body, speech, mind, and all in one. That's it. Empowering the body. We have to empower our body. We have to empower our speech. Okay? Uh, that also means empowering the uh, energy and then empowering mind and then all in one. That's the last one. Body, speech, mind and all in one. That, that's like a complete aspect of our self, right? When we talk about who is self, we have a body, we have a speech, we have mind and we put all together and that's it. Mm -hmm. So that's why empowerment is very, how do you say, a very well structured, you know, okay? But uh, I think you, yeah, you're asking Medicine Buddha empowerment, long life empowerment, and this and that. But it has, these four roots can have many little branches. Mm -hmm. Yes, other questions? Other questions? No? Yeah? Um, I have a question. Um, the empowerment we're getting Just today... A I, I have to say that don't make any questions without a microphone. Yeah, we have a group mic we'll pass around, we'll find you. And they will miss everything, so kindly... Do not speak without the microphone. Thank you. My question is, um, you had mentioned self-empowerment and long life empowerment. Those yes. are the two main empowerments we're getting today. Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> today, yeah, we are getting the, <clears throat> the first empowerment is called the, the essential empowerment. That's for five chakras. Uh, transforming five mental poisons into five wisdoms. That's called the root empowerment. And then long life empowerment. Okay, each of the empowerment, like the root empowerment, we have, we go this uh, uh, four empowerments, and then the long life has seven points. Yeah. And could you tell me what is the name of those two? Yeah, one is Don Wang in Tibetan. It means essential empowerment. First one is Don Wang, essential empowerment. Second one is Tsewang, long life empowerment. According to Yu To Nin Tik. Okay? And then uh, Wang would be W A N G? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Wang, yeah. Thank you. Um. I was wondering, when we talk about longevity, are we talking about this life only? Are we talking about looking to infinite lives? 
uh, and past. Infinite life is topic for professor. <laughs> 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 That's his book, okay? <laughs> My book is Tibetan book of health is your dislike. <laughs> I want you to read about 100 years. After that, I don't care. After that, you search professor. <laughs> So I guess I guess my question is more um, if we have infinite lives is longevity sort of uh, a benefit to empowerment or is that a goal well okay that's a good question you have to see everything in two levels okay one is a conventional level or a relative aspect and one is the ultimate when you say the infinite life is an ultimate state, you understand? Mm -hmm. But we cannot get that ultimate state just like that. And before you get that, you have to prepare this relative reality. Reality, conventional reality, conventional, conventional reality. Yeah. Okay? So I'm more physical. I'm talking conventional reality. I want to help you to reach 100 years. That's the physical one, okay? Do you understand? So these two are not something contradicting or separated. So we, it's like, uh, like like a Buddha, you know. Buddha needed a physical human body. Without that human physical body, he could not attain enlightenment. Do you understand? That's why we have to take care of this physical body. Physical body is not that important, not the final goal, but it is important. So we need a body and the time to study. Exactly. You need to live long in order to practice more. Thank you. Yeah, okay. yeah there's, a, there's a good point. The Yama. Yeah, that's why I try to make, you know, the Soa Rikpa is really like longevity, you know. You really, you be careful with your diet and lifestyle and, you know, medications, this and that, and you, you really extend this life, right? But uh, then, of course, what we are looking for in our this life is not only that longevity. There's something maybe much more profound, you know, like uh, infinite uh, life or spiritual enlightenment, whatever. Yeah. But this this real health is the foundation for everything. Okay. That's why when Buddha, when he was fasting, he had to drink the milk. Right. Buddha, he, can, he could say, I'm free from the physical drinks and food, but he had to do that because he had a physical body. Okay, and that's the, the topic with Jivaka, Buddha's doctor, okay? Buddha's doctor, he's arguing with Buddha. Sometimes Buddha says, oh, it doesn't matter what I eat, I drink. He said, yes, it matters, because you have a human body. <laughs> so that's why this uh, Jivaka, it was very much about health. He's reminding Buddha, house, 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 <laughs> what you are diet, you know, sleep enough, this and that. And actually Buddha likes that idea. That's why Buddha invited him to become the doctor for Buddhist community. So actually he was curing all monks. Do you understand? So if health is not the foundation of the spirituality, then why Buddha invited a doctor in his community? Do you understand? So... Uh, uh, and uh, for sure, Buddha knew that health is important for spiritual practices too. If there's no health, we can practice, right? Okay? Any other questions? Can I say one thing yes, about, yes, about the infinite see. life? The, the microphone. That, uh, that the material is... Or I think I have a microphone. It's on. But maybe it's not on. Ah, it's, it's on. on. But the material is like to say, if you have that perspective of future life, that then you don't care about this life because you're going to have another one. They try to pretend. But actually, if you have the infinite life perspective that you're going to have a future life, this life becomes, and taking care of health, like you say, becomes even more important. And taking care of practice, because what you do in this life will affect this future life in such an enormous manner. And uh, whereas if you, the materialist, since nothing happens at the end of this life, then what you do in this life doesn't matter ultimately. Whereas if there's an infinite life, Meaning that you don't have the tree, you break free of the terminal lifestyle. The idea that you're just living this life. <laughs> then if you have more lives in the future that depend on what you do in this life, this life becomes much more important 
that you chew it really well, live 100 years, and use your human body in a positive way, etc. It, it's far, it's the opposite, in other words, of what they maintain. Okay? That's all I wanted to say. Thank you.